I'm going to talk about the average rate of change of a function. So you may have heard your calculus teacher talk about this topic and wondered what exactly are they talking about. Well, when finding the average rate of change of a function, you're basically looking at how much the y values of that function change versus how much the x values change between two particular points on that function. Now, there's actually a couple of ways that you could approach this type of problem, and so I'm going to show you both ways graphically and kind of the ideas of why we're going to use one over the other. All right? So go ahead and let's check this out. Suppose we have a function, and let's call it f of x. I'm curious about how much this function changes between two particular points, and I'll go ahead and mark them out uh, with these two blue dots like this. In order to figure out uh, how much the function is changing between those two points, what I'll essentially be doing is looking for the slope of the secant line that goes between them. So if I had to draw that secant line, it would look something like this. There we are. So we are curious as the slope of that line. Now, in order to compute this, I need to know where these points are located. Well, this essentially amounts to knowing their x and y values. So for sake of argument, I will label this guy x1, and I will label the x value of this one as x2. To figure out their y values, I would essentially take this x value and plug it into the function. So to keep things nice and general, I'll say that its x value is x1, and its y value, I find that when I plug in x1 into the function. So this point is located at, at x1, f of x1, and this point is located at x2, f of x2. All right. Now, to compute the slope, basically I'm looking at subtracting the y values divided by subtracting the x values. So I have f of x2 minus f of x1 all over x2 minus x1. So this formula right here will give me the average rate of change for this particular function between these two points, x1 and x2. Now, this isn't the only way to compute it, uh, nor is this necessarily the way we want to start computing average rates of change between two points. The reason is, when we go this direction, we essentially have to know exactly where these two points are. We need both of their x values, and we need both of their y values. The reason why that, you know, that's not going to be very handy in the future is we'll essentially fix one of these points and start moving where the other one is. And if we start moving that other point, it's going to get harder and harder to determine where those x and y values for the second point always end up. So instead, let's look at the same problem from a different angle and see another way that we can compute the average rate of change. So I'm essentially going to use that same function that I did before, f of x, and I'm going to define my points in a slightly different way. Let's go ahead and first put them on our graph. And again, I'll be curious as to finding that secant line. All right, so like before, I'm going to call this first point, its x value, x1. And that's the one I'm really interested in. As for my second point, I'm going to define this in a very interesting way. I'm going to define it in terms of a distance from my first point. So this second point is a distance of h away. Now since it is a distance of h away, I can describe its x value as x1 plus this distance h. Now that seems like a really funny way to define the second point, but just follow me for a bit and you'll see why it is important. All right, now in order to do the average rate of change, I need some y values. Well, we'll define that first point exactly the same way as we did before. So x1, and I basically plug it into the function f of x1. And I do the same thing with the second point, so it has an x value at x1 plus h. And I could take that value and plug it into the function and get f of x1 plus h. There you go. So essentially, I'm defining the x and y values in terms of the first point and a distance from that first point. 
Now let's go ahead and compute the slope of our secant line and see the formula that this builds. So like before, I'm going to subtract my y values. So I take my second y value, f of x1 plus h, and I subtract the first y value, f of x1, divided by, subtract the x values, so x plus 1 minus x1. So you can see this, this looks like what we did before, only I'm just using x1 and h to do it. Now, I can simplify this formula just a little bit by canceling out some extra x1s in the bottom. f of x1 plus h minus f of x1 all over h. Now, this gives us what is known as the difference quotient. And it essentially does the same thing as before. It figures out the slope of the secant line between the two points. Now, this is how you're going to want to start computing the average rate of change between two points because it's essentially doing it only using a single point and a distance. The reason why that is so important is, again, we'll basically fix one of our points, x1, we'll make sure it doesn't move, and we'll end up changing where the other one is. Using this new formula, I don't necessarily need to know where that other one is. Instead, I'll just need to know how far away it is. So when I start making this distance smaller and smaller and smaller, I'll have an easier time working with this difference quotient than I will the uh, first slope formula. So you definitely want to get familiar, familiar with this one, and you'll see it as we start building deeper into limits. Uh, watch my further videos for some examples on using the difference quotient to find the average rate of change for a function.